Uh, first of all, good afternoon. good afternoon. My name is Daryl Queen, and I'm a dialysis patient. I'll be three years this November, next month. And, um, my life is all over the place. I actually work six days a week on dialysis. I'm a regimented individual. I was in the military. I grew up in a military somewhat family. So I go to in-center because I have to have parameters. I have to have guidelines to say I have to go to a certain time, at a certain time, and do a certain thing, and I'm done with it. I don't want to have to think about it anymore. So that, that works better for me. You have to figure out what your lifestyle is going to be like and what, you, what works better for you. Now, I play vice principal during the week at school. I run a martial arts school. I'm a hairdresser and a makeup artist, and I own a salon also. <laughs> so my life is all over the place. So, so this week, actually, counting being here, I work seven days straight. And that included dialysis. <laughs> While I'm on the dialysis machine, I got my iPad, I'm taking notes, I'm making phone calls on my phone, trying to take other things, so I'm still not even asleep at the time. I'm still working. So I found a way, because I was devastated, like the doctor said, at the beginning, I was like, oh man, I do all these things, how am I gonna get this stuff done and be on dialysis at the same time? You know, and it's, it's a juggling act. But the biggest thing you have to do is learn how to be regimented enough to take care of you so you can do all those things, all the things you want to do. And you have to stick your fingers. And I feel like a pincushion sometimes. Because I'm a diabetic for the last 32 years. I have congestive heart failure. My heart only functions 20%. And I've been on dialysis now for three years, as I said. <laughs> so I have three major things to deal with. But folks say, well, looking at the way you act, you know, we hate to see you on the other 40% since heart function is 60%. <laughs> Because I can function on 20 so well. <laughs> but you have, to, you have a choice. As the doctor said, figure out what works better for you according to your lifestyle and other things you want to do. The only hindrance I can say a lot of times that bothers me is that I can't go out of the country the way I want because I don't trust a lot of doctors outside the country. <laughs> I, don't want, I want everybody playing with my blood. <laughs> Especially nowadays with everything going on. You sit next to somebody, and next thing you contracted something, and they ain't going to let you back in the country. <laughs> 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 that doesn't work too well for me. So the thought of that, I say that I've recognized the fact that I might not be able to go to Brazil again. <laughs> so I'll go to the Grand Canyon instead. <laughs> so I'm, I'm grateful for that. But at the same token, there's a lot of things you can't do. Don't limit yourself mentally to thinking you can't do X, Y, and Z. There's a lot of things you can do. When I, I go to karate practice and I, mar I teach martial arts four days a week. I practice twice a day myself and I actually have class twice a week and it's two to three hours a shot. And um, I go after dialysis most of the time. <laughs> so I can function at least two to three hours efficiently after dialysis. And a lot of times when I go to the treatment, I've got my, my karate uniform on <laughs> and I go straight to practice. <laughs> and they were like, you don't feel tired? Well, once again, as the doctor said, it depends on how well you take care of yourself. Like I said, I'm very regimented. I cook, I don't eat nothing canned, nothing boxed. I cook fr fresh or frozen. I started cooking when I was eight. Baked my first muffins when I was eight and cooked my first turkey when I was 11. <laughs> so I was oldest of five. It was one of those things where I was kind of tricked or forced <laughs> to cooking by mistake. <laughs> but I did it anyway. And as it comes out, so many things we do in life works to our benefit, right? <laughs> and so at it, who knows if I was going to get sick or be a diabetic later on. I like cooking. Right now, me and my wife make a joke all the time because, you know, we've been married almost three years and she hasn't cooked breakfast, lunch, or dinner in four years. So. So I'm, I'm trying to figure if I'm an indentured servant, and I'm just trying to work, earn my freedom here. Or, 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 should I just keep working or what? But, but either way, we have a sign that says the queen doesn't cook. <laughs> so I guess I got my orders. <laughs> but at, no, no matter what it is, you know, like I said, mentally it does become devastating sometimes. And really, it gets on my nerves sometimes. I get tired. I say, ah, I feel like I just went to treatment. I got to go back all over again. But... You say, you know, okay, what can I do with the time that I have while I'm at treatment? Make that time fruitful. No, just don't sleep it away all the time. I want to tell you, I take a nap sometimes I really need it. Sometimes, honestly, I look forward to it. I say, I'm going to dialysis because God knows I wouldn't take a break if I wasn't forced to. <laughs> so I kind of look at it as my forced break. So I look at it, so I use that time to help rejuvenate myself while I'm, being, while I'm on treatment at the same time so mentally it won't be so devastating. So you got to find other things you can do to fill that time and that space with in order to make it more fruitful and more palatable for you so you can continue your life on and on. 
Now, I teach night school a lot of times. So on, on Wednesdays, I go, I go get treatment. I go open up the school in the morning. I leave at 1 o'clock. I got Dallas at 2 o'clock. I get off the machine at 5. By 6 o'clock, I'm back in school. <laughs> Teaching till 9 o'clock. <laughs> a lot of times on, on, on Wednesday and Thursday evening. And so I back up the next morning. Thursday doing the same thing. Got to go to karate practice. I have to go to the salon, go to school. <laughs> Keep it going Friday, back again. So it makes me tired thinking about it sometimes, but uh, got to keep going. So it looks like it's my forced break a lot of times. So there's a lot of things you can do to keep yourself active and keep going, which is the other big part of all these things we are confronted with. Staying active of some sort. I don't care if you're taking a walk, if you're going to inside the mall, you're just mall walking, but you have to do something to keep the body regulated and keep it moving. You can't allow yourself to begin secondary to the point that things start to happen or creep up inside your body because of lack of movement. The body is made and forced to be moved. Your blood doesn't stop moving. Your, the water in your body doesn't stop moving. Every state keeps moving. You, you want to keep those cells built up and breaking down constantly. That takes movement. 18 to 72 hours after you consume anything, it's in your hair. And you wonder why people have problems, because they don't drink enough water. I can look at the average person's wrist and tell how much water you drink. <laughs> so that's one of the things we do as a consultation in cosmetology is try to ascertain, you know, what are the things that are affecting your body overall. You want to know if somebody's sick, look at their hair, their skin, and their nails. You can always tell. One of those three is going to give you a sign if they're sick of some sort. Skin, definitely. Yeah. This average skin weighs 12.1 pounds. You, you'd be surprised the things you can see in your skin. But it's a lot of things you have to take notice of yourself. You have to check yourself. I check my graph every day, several times a day. My wife would say, what you doing? Are you all right? I said, I'm checking. <laughs> How long is it here? Boom, 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 boom. Or swish, swish, swish. <laughs> I know I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> but I check it all the time. I check my feet, my arms. I stick my fingers two to three times a day. I keep a log on my iPad. Anytime the doctor calls me, I can tell what my sugars were in the morning, what they were in the evening. <laughs> so you have to be regimented. You have to take care of you. If you don't want to take care of you, who's going to do it? You can't depend on everybody else. You have to take care of you. And if you don't, if you don't do that and work in conjunction with the health professionals, who are trying to help you, take care of you, then you're cheating yourself and you're shortening your lifespan. And we all have too much we want to do and want to see. I work for the Cancer Society, working on cancer patients early in part of my career. And I had to get certified to do that. The first time I did that, I cried like a baby. Because I was going there to do hair on people who were critically ill, and, um, and my only job was to make them look good and feel better. And a, a gentleman came to me and he was, it was a young man who had a muscle disorder, was forced him to lose his hair around the temples, around the sides of his head. He said, well, can you, um, can you help my son? I said, sure. He said, well, I need you to come to my house. So I said, fine. I drove way out to Bella and Merle somewhere and did the man's, did the little boy's hair. And when I got finished, the man just started crying. You know, because he had help for his son. And I said, if that's the kind of job I have to do, in order for me to do it, I got to take care of me first. If I take care of me first, I can continue doing those things I need to do to help somebody else. Because if you're a real man, 90% of what you do is not even for you. It's supposed to be for somebody else. That's right. hmm. And so thank you very much for listening to my big mouth. And I'll be <laughs>